Good evening. Time now for sports, and we lead with cricket this evening. Australian John Dyson has been sacked as the West Indies coach. The West Indies Cricket Board announced today that they were firing Dyson after his two-year stint. Dyson's departure comes on the heels of a bitter impasse between the West Indies Cricket Board and the Players' Union during the recent home series against Bangladesh. The 54-year-old was forced to oversee a makeshift West Indies squad, which lost heavily to the Tigers. Former Wendy's wicketkeeper David Williams, who was Dyson's assistant, is now the interim head coach, while spin bowling legend Lance Gibbs steps in as manager for the Trinidadian Omar Khan. Both men are in charge of preparing the Caribbean side for the ICC Champions Trophy next month in South Africa. Time to look back at yesterday's Ogier Stroke and Stride series. Marius Acker and Lizzie Haynes capturing the individual wins in the popular swim and run event. A beautiful evening on South Sound as the swimmers hit the water for the 400-meter course. Acker and Special Olympics athlete Andrew Smiley pushing the pace early, watched by Carifta champion Seiji Groom. Smiley separated himself from the pack. Him as well. While Haynes had an awesome swim, and was the first woman to the transition point. Thank you. On the road, Acker stamped his dominance and ran away with another stroke and stride victory. Haynes wasn't too far behind, capping off a solid win. Conditions were great. There wasn't choppy at all. There was like hardly any current. And um, yeah, it was quite nice. The run was pretty tough. I got to say, um, I, haven't, I haven't been doing too much running lately and I was struggling for the last mile or so. Haynes is looking forward to dominating the rest of the three race series. As long as nothing goes wrong, I don't get injured or um, it's not postponed, I, I'm hoping to stay that, like, in the top three and maybe if I'm lucky, and I'll, I'll manage to win it. Well, the second race in the series is next Wednesday, once again at Sunset House, starting at 5.45 in the evening. Moving over to football, the FC International Youth Football Camp has been another resounding success. In its eighth year, the camp has hundreds of aspiring footballers being put through their paces by technical director Albert McLean and a team of coaches at the Annex Field. Kids for the week gets in at least about six hours, eight hours of basic training. Well, I've been working with FC for the last eight, eight years, and every year that um, you know, that we, since we started, since I started working with FC, the number has been increasing each year, each year. You know, to date, we got 183 kids registered to date. I know by tomorrow we should reach about 200. We have to appreciate really what sports brings to, to a young person. Learning skills, the tenacity, determination, all of the skills that are required if those children are going to be successful in school or in their jobs or in their own business one day. Sports is going to give them a lot of those skills they need. I see a lot of talent, a lot, a lot of talent from the younger ones right up to the older ones. Them. A lot of talent here. Those kids really had some fun. And finally, the Trinidad and Tobago Soko Warriors score an important victory in the CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers last evening. The Warriors edge El Salvador thanks to an early Cornell Glen goal. The result left both teams on five points at the bottom of the standings with four games remaining. So Trinidad and Tobago trying to emulate their feat of qualifying for the FIFA World Cup that they did in 2006. In other results, Mexico rallied to defeat the United States at the Azteca 2-1, while Honduras toppled Costa Rica 4-0, continuing their impressive performance. To this date, Costa Rica still leads the standings. That's sports for this evening. Weather is next.